Hey boot campers, today's workout is going to be a one dumbbell workout. So all you need is one dumbbell. You don't need to prepare for today. This is the exact same type of format that we would do when we're open during boot camp. So this is as legit as you get. We're going to start with the warm up. We'll get into that workout. So let's start just by jogging on the spot here. And then as you start jogging, you're gradually bringing those knees up higher and higher until you get to a full high knee, fast jog, slash light sprint. And we'll do this for a few more seconds before getting into some arm circles. In three, two, one, so arm circles, warming up those shoulders. We got a little bit of everything today. Four different groups. We're going to go through two rounds. The one dumbbell just helps get a lot more of those stabilizer muscles activated that you don't really get when you're using two weights, and you'll feel the difference. We're going to do a cat cow coming up in three, two, one. So hands and knees, arching that back, chest up, and then around your back. Push those hips in. So arch. And round. Really try to exaggerate both knees as much as you can. So really arching that back to stretch out your, uh, your abs here and really round your back. So you're stretching your back. A few more reps here and then we're going to get into a bird dog. Okay, three, two, one, elbow to knee and reach. As you reach, you're just going to hold that for about a second or two. Make sure you're squeezing that glute of whichever leg is extended. Also fully extending your arm. A few more here and then we're going to switch sides. Okay, three, two, one, switch sides. Elbow to knee and reach. Try to keep your back straight here. Shoulders stacking right on top of those wrists. We're going to do a few more before getting into body weight squats. Okay, three, two, one, stand up. Body weight squats, warming up those quads. And then after the body weight squats, we'll do some swings for the hamstrings. Take your time with those squats. Allow those knees to track over your feet. Make sure they're not caving in. Just keep it nice and controlled. Okay, three, two, one, let's hinge and swing. Sitting back on the heels here, stretching those muscles in the back of your legs while keeping your back straight. And as you stand up, you push those hips forward and squeeze your bum muscles. After this, we're going to do a row to reverse fly. Okay, three, two, one, nice and low, row, and reverse fly. Keep that back straight, squeeze those shoulder blades. You're in that same hip hinge position that you were in last time, except you're holding it. After this, we're gonna go hands together, rotate side to side. Okay, three, two, one, let's stand up, hands together, rotate. Side to side. Keep those feet anchored. Really warming up those obliques. Mid back, upper back, shoulders. Nice and controlled here. And then after this, we'll finish off with some jumping jacks. Okay, in three, two, one. Jumping jacks to finish up. You can start slow to try to gradually increase that speed as you finish the second. That one will be nice and warmed up as we get through the workout. Go for another 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, so one dumbbell workout. We got four groups. Each group has 10 sets. 
So the timing is going to be 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off. We're going to go through two rounds. So we're going to go through all the exercises and sets now. That way you don't have to worry about it in between. The first group here, we're going to start with a single arm press. Unless you're going super heavy, try to keep it strict. So you're not doing a push press here. Legs are straight, back straight. Not tilting your body too much side to side. So you do that for 30 seconds. The second set, you're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So 30 seconds of a single arm press. After that, we're going to do a goblet squat. So you're going to hold that weight right under your chin. Keep those elbows in. Squat down. Drive up for 30 seconds. Then we're going to do a hovering toe touch. So you don't need to wait for this one. You're going to be on your back. Feet off the ground, roughly 90 degrees or so. And then you're going to use your hands one at a time to try to touch your, your heels or your toes. So the upper back is off the ground. And in the last one, we're going to do some swimmers. So swimmers, you're on your stomach. The goal here is to try to keep your elbows and knees off the ground. And then you're just going to go up and down. So a great full body workout here, especially the entire back part of your body. And then we'll go back to station one and repeat two rounds. The second group, we're going to start off with a single arm dumbbell snatch. So you want to keep that dumbbell close to your body here. Try to generate some speed and explosiveness and then open up one smooth motion overhead. The second set, you're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Make sure you keep that weight close to your body. After the dumbbell snatch on both sides, we're going to do lunges. Lunges, you can hold the weight off the position, you can go suitcase position. It's totally up to you. You're going to alternate legs. So whether it's forward or reverse, it's totally up to you. Just remember, we're only doing one set of the lunges in the first round, and we switch uh, and do the exact same thing in the second round. Next up, we're going to do a Russian twist. So if you don't have a super, super heavy weight, use your dumbbell here for the Russian twist. Otherwise, it's okay if you go body weight. If you're able to, feet up, chest up, shoulders down, and then just rotate side to side. Nice and controlled here. And the last final exercise here, you don't need a dumbbell, and we're going to do just some basic scissor jacks. So it's kind of like a jumping jack variation. Nice soft knees, stand the balls of your feet. Scissor jacks. Go back to station one, repeat for round two. The third group, we're going to start with a single leg deadlift. You're going to hold the weight either with one arm or with two arms. It's totally up to you. You're going to hinge back, back leg goes back, chest stays up, back stays straight. First set, you're going to do one side. Second set, you're going to switch legs. If you happen to be using one arm, switch arms and legs after each set. Then we're going to do rows. Rows you can either do with uh, both arms here by grabbing the side of the weights and pulling through. If you prefer, if you don't have a really heavy weight and you want to go single arm, that's okay. Just keep in mind that we're not going back to back with the rows. So you won't do that other side until we get back to the second round. After that, we're going to do a side bridge. So you don't, you don't need a dumbbell for this one. We're going to get to a side plank position. You can either stack your feet, you can cross them over, you can drop that back knee. Just make sure the hip stays up and the back stays straight. From there, you're going to drop your hip and drive up. So the first round, you're going to do one side. The second round, you're going to switch sides. And the last exercise here will be body weight jump squat. So you're going to try to get as much speed and explosiveness as you can. Drive up and land nice and soft. That final group, we're going to start with a single arm dumbbell swing. So it's just like a regular dumbbell swing. This is going to really test to make sure your hips are going to work and not your arms. So you're going to have that one dumbbell between your knees here, hinge from the hips, and use your hips to drive your weight forward, and the weight just kind of falls. So the first set, you're going to do one side, second set, switch, and then after that, no weight needed, we're going to work on our push-ups. So push-ups, you can either do on your toes or your knees, traditional push-ups, any sort of push-up variation. Obviously, what we're looking for here is full range of motion, so that's the most important thing when we're doing a push-up. After the push-up, we're going to do hover jackknives. So you're on your back here, just a regular jackknife. The only difference is you have your feet off the ground the whole time, more constant tension, and then you're gonna reach up and try to touch that toe, alternating sides. You can't do that with the hover, it's okay if your feet are on the ground. And then the last one here is gonna be a half burpee. So no weight needed, push up position, bring your feet to your hands, and then step back. So nice soft knees, try to keep the hips relatively low there. Two rounds, and then we're all done. So 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off, we're going to go through two rounds of each group. The first group, we're going to start with a single arm press. If you're going super heavy, you can do a push press, otherwise regular strict press. Both sides, then we're going to do a goblet squat, hover toe touches, and swimmers for two rounds. So grab your one weight, let's get into position, we're about to get started. 
Okay, so we're gonna start with that single arm press. In three, two, one, let's go. Now you'll notice when you do a lot of single arm, single leg work, is it becomes more challenging because you're using a lot more of these small stabilizer muscles. So this exercise, in general, any press is really good for your shoulders, but this one's gonna test a lot more of the core because you're resisting your body's tendency to want to go to one side. You've got 10 seconds to go. Watch your breathing, breathe out as you press, breathe in on the way down. Nice and controlled if you can. Three, two, one. So take 10 seconds, exact same thing on the other side. Okay, three, two, one. And since this is a strict press, you want to try to keep your back as straight as you can. There's three cues that will automatically straighten out your back every time. Squeeze your quads, so the big leg muscles, squeeze your abs, and squeeze your butt. If those three muscles stay engaged the whole time, your back will naturally stay straight every time. We've got 10 seconds to go. Make sure you're breathing as well. So breathing out as you press, breathing on the way down. In three, two, one. 10 seconds, goblet squats up next. So now we're gonna work on the legs. Three, two, one. So you're holding that weight just under your chin. You wanna to try to keep those elbows in tight. It does a few things. Keeping the elbows in tight engages your lats, which creates more tension and leverage. And not only that, but when your elbows are in, it directs your body to go down. When your elbows flare out, you're more likely to kind of hinge forward. So the goblet squat in general is a great exercise for your quads, builds those leg muscles, but also the upper mid-back and the core. So you get a lot of bang for your buck with this goblet squat here. Three, two, one. Next, you can drop that weight when you hover, toe touches, or heel touches, whatever you're on. Let's start at three, two, one. So one arm at a time, reaching out. Keep your shoulder blades off the ground here, keep those shoulders off the ground. We're using that low and mid back to kind of move side to side, which is engaging your abs. So it's a great exercise for your abs. The good thing, once you keep those shoulders and shoulder blades off the ground, automatically your low back stays flat, which automatically means your core is going to be engaged, and that's what you want. We got less than 10 seconds to go. Okay, three, two, one. Let's move on to that last nation for the first round, and then we'll go back to round two. So swimmers are going to be on your stomach. No weights needed here. Three, two, one. This exercise is deceivingly difficult. You want to get those elbows off the ground, and you want to get the knees off the ground. So some of you, if you have weaker boots or really tight back, you're not going to be able to get the knees off the ground. So it's a great exercise to help identify and correct some of those imbalances. If you're not able to do this, you might want to get into a hip bridge or some sort of hamstring or boot exercise. But we're working the upper back, the lower back, the boots, and the hamstrings. A little bit of everything. Three, two, one. All right, let's go back to station one, round two. So single arm press again. Okay, three, two, one. It's totally up to you if you want to go palm forward or palm in. Just be conscious of your posture here. Try not to tilt too much side to side. So this workout, you're moving quick, very short breaks, very efficient, very effective. All you need is one dumbbell. You can do it anywhere, anytime. 10 seconds, guys. Okay, three, two, one. Let's take 10 seconds, move on to that other side. Three, two, one, let's go. So the push press is really good if you're looking to build explosiveness and strength, whereas the strict press would be a better alternative if you're just looking to work and or build the muscle in the shoulders. Because there's a lot more time under tension because of how slow you're going and how strict the form is. 10 seconds, because you're not using your legs to help out here, you're not uh, pushing through really fast. Three, two, one. Goblet squats up next. Okay, three, two, one. The good thing with the goblet squat is it corrects a lot of natural flaws in people's squat because of the fact that you're holding that weight in. Just make sure your feet stay flat on the ground because even still, 
you might notice your heel's gonna wanna come off. Especially if you have bad knees, you're already putting way too much pressure on your knees. And by allowing your heels to come off the ground, you're just perpetuating that, you're making it worse. So try to sit back in the heels. Three, two, one. Next, bring through those toe touches, feet hovered off the ground. And we'll start at three, two, one. Let's go. Take your time with this one. Once you get that rhythm, then you can start to speed up. But once you're starting out, just try to keep those shoulders off the ground, keep that low back on the ground, and go from there. And just try to touch those heels if you can, or as close to them as possible. 10 seconds, swimmers up next. Three, two, one. So last one here, and then we'll take a break, move on to that second group. So swimmers, on your stuff. Three, two, one. Let's go. You don't have to go too fast here. Instead, I really want you to focus on four points of contact that stay off the ground. Left elbow, right elbow, left knee, right knee. Make sure you're not bending the knees like this. So you keep your legs nice and straight. You can bend the elbows a little bit, but make sure those legs are straight. Almost there. Three, two, one. All right, so we're gonna take 45 seconds. We're gonna move on to that second group. So here we're gonna start with the dumbbell snatch. We'll do that both sides. Lunges, alternating either forward or reverse. You can hold that weight any way you like. Russian twist with or without a weight, and then scissor backs. Okay, so just under 30 seconds to rest. Remember the dumbbell snatch should be a little bit different than the press because this one is explosive. You want to generate some speed. You want some power. It's not as controlled. That's a good thing. So it might even seem easier because you're using more muscles, and that's okay. 10 seconds. Okay, let's begin in three, two, one. Let's go. So a few mistakes we see with the dumbbell snatch. Number one is rounding that back. Make sure you use your legs here to get down and drive up, not your back. Second mistake, making it a two-part movement. So stopping at the shoulders and then push pressing overhead. Instead, you wanna go one movement right overhead. And number three is allowing that weight to come too far out the front. Keep it in tight the whole time. Three, two, one. Let's take 10 seconds, switch sides, exact same thing. In three, two, one, same thing on the other side. Another common mistake we see is people make it turn up to almost like a front raise, where they're keeping that arm straight and going overhead. First of all, you're going way too light if you're able to do that. Second of all, you're not getting any leverage. So you want to bend the elbow, keep the weight close to your body, and then open up from there. 10 seconds. Use those legs to generate some speed. So drive up, especially if you're going heavy here. Three, two, one. Let's take 10 seconds. Lunges next. You can hold that weight any way you like. Forward or reverse. Okay, three, two, one. So as you might have guessed, lunges are a great exercise for your legs, in particular the quads, so these four big thigh muscles, and your butt, and the glutes. So if you're doing a lunge properly, meaning you're getting down low, 90 degree angle with both your legs, it's one of the best exercises you can do for your glutes, not just your quads. So a little bit of everything, which is why it's such an effective exercise. If you're able to, everyone should do lunge variations. Three, two, one. Russian twist up next. So see if you can use your weight here. Try not to uh, swing it too much. Three, two, one. So there's quite a few mistakes we see people make with the Russian twist. The first mistake is no control. And that's when the Russian twist becomes not only ineffective, but a dangerous exercise when you're just rotating without any sort of control. So engaging your glutes, the second mistake, or engaging your core, the second mistake people make is leading with the arm. Instead, lead with your hips. So allow your body to rotate first and then have that dumbbell follow rather than the other way around. Three, two, one. Scissor jacks up next. So no dumbbell needed for this one. Oh, 
Okay, three, two, one, let's go. So get the same thing done as a regular jumping jack. Makes it a little bit more explosive because you're really on the balls of your feet the whole time. You can make it a little bit more challenging by bending that front knee just a little bit the way Joel is. Uh, but you definitely don't have to do that. It's a bit of a different exercise than you do normally, so it might take a couple tries before you get that coordination. If you'd rather do a regular jumping jack, by all means, go for it. After this, we're going to go back to station one, round two. Three, two, one. Okay, so back to dumbbell snatch, round two. Remember what I said last time, guys. Try to keep those cues in mind. Three, two, one. Let's go. So Q1, make sure your knees are bent. Make sure your back is straight. You don't have to go all the way down to the ground. If you do, that's fine. But the most important thing is that you keep that back straight. Number two, make sure that weight stays close to your body the whole time. You're not allowing it to come too far in front. And number three, one smooth motion. Not stopping at the shoulders and then pressing. So get some speed here. Okay, three, two, one. Take 10 seconds, switch sides, same thing. Three, two, one. It's really good to mix in a combination of slow controlled exercises with explosive exercises. Because usually we're dominant, or at least we prefer one or the other, depending if you're fast twitch, which would be really good at this stuff, or slow twitch, which means you're really good at muscular endurance type of work. But it's good to mix up different intensities, different speeds. Three, two, one, lunges next. If you went single arm with the lunge last time, just switch sides. Okay, three, two, one, so a few common mistakes with the lunge. Number one is that front foot. You see the heel coming off the ground. Number two is not going down nearly low enough. So if you're not sure, let that back knee just tap the ground at least so you know you're there. And number three is the back caving forward. The round like this. You want to make sure you keep that chest up, keep that back straight. Three, two, one. Russian twist. So nice and controlled here with the twist. Remember what I said last time. Three, two, one. And if you're not able to go feet up, that's okay. You don't have to. Just remember, you're initiating the movement from your torso, from your core, and then the arms just follow. Too many people, one, try to go way too fast, and two, just go leading with the arms, flaring that weight side to side. And that's when the problems can come. If the Russian twist went done properly, it's a great exercise, but it's commonly mistaken. Three, two, one, last one here, scissor jacks. And then we'll take a break and move on to move three. All right, three, two, one, scissor jacks. So staying active here, meaning you're in that ready position on the balls of your feet. It's one of those exercises where the heels don't really need to touch the ground. You want to stay active and explosive. That way, as soon as your feet touch the ground, you drive off the switch. 10 seconds, guys. Three, two, one. All right, let's take a break. 45 seconds. Two down, two to go. Third group, we're going to do a single leg deadlift. Both sides. Rows, you can either go two arms or one, side bridges in a side plank position, and then body weight, jump squats. So under 30 seconds to rest here, single leg deadlift, you can either grab a weight with one arm or two. Doesn't matter which leg goes back relative to your arm, as long as the technique looks good. So chest up, back straight, get that back leg fully extended. Very slight bend in that front knee. So let's get ready, guys. We're about to start here. In three, two, one. So this exercise is one of my favorite exercises, but very few people can do it properly. So back stays straight, slight bend in that front knee, on the heel, back leg is fully extended. If you can't do that, try using a wall for support, or you can do a kickstand deadlift. 
Because if you're not having any balance here, you're rounding, you're putting too much pressure on your back. Work up in increments. Three, two, one. So take a break, guys, 10 seconds. I'll share some of the most common mistakes here with this uh, single leg deadlift and you can kind of uh, troubleshoot yourself. Ready? Let's go. Number one is having no control of the core and the back and just allowing your body to kind of round. Make sure you keep that chest up and back straight. Number two is having that front leg fully extended, so no bend at all. You never want to have your leg fully extended like that in any position. And number three is either not having that back leg go up high enough or bending it too much rather than extending it. But the most common mistake is just having no control on the core and rounding that back. Three, two, one. So next we're going to do the rows. You can either grab both hands here, you can do single arm, depending how heavy you're going with. Three, two, one. If you're going single arm like Jonas here, there's two ways you can do this. You can do the three point row like this, requires a lot more core stability and hamstring support, or you can do a stagger stance. Now there's nothing wrong with the stagger stance. It's definitely easier, especially if you're not good with the hip hinge. It takes away a lot of that requirement for you. And then just make sure with the row, you're never pulling straight up. You're always pulling on an angle. Three, two, one, side bridge. So you get into a side plank position. Don't worry about the rows, we'll switch on the second round, guys. So side plank and then drop up and down. Ready? Let's go. Like I said earlier, you can stack those feet. If you cross over, you can drop that knee. Common mistakes here is having the elbow out too far or too tight having that back round. The most important thing is having a neutral spine and getting into that side plank. Once you're in the side plank, then you can think about dropping the hips. You'll notice as she drops the hips, the technique doesn't change. It looks the exact same. She's using her obliques here. No other compensation. Three, two, one. So last one here, we're gonna do some body weight jump squats. Then we'll go back to station one for round two. Three, two, one. Let's go. So just like I said with the dumbbell snatch, the body weight jump squat is an explosive exercise here. So you want to try to generate speed, generate power, jump up as high as you can. And that's what's going to make it a lot more challenging. That's what's going to hit your quads harder. That's what's going to get that heart rate up even more. 10 seconds. So if you want intensity with your workouts, you have to bring the intensity. It's not just doing the exercises, but pushing. Three, two, one. One. All right, let's go back to station one. Round two, single leg deadlifts. So take your time with this one, guys. Three, two, one. Let's go. The single leg deadlifts, great exercise for your hamstrings, for overall stability of the hip. So if you notice that your back is rounding, that's a problem with the core in the back. But if you notice that you don't have the balance, it's probably an ankle or foot stability issue. And you're more likely to have sprained ankles and foot injuries if you're unable to stabilize yourself with the balance with these single leg movements. Three, two, one, and we're gonna switch sides. And you're probably gonna notice one side's a little bit easier than the other, that's okay. Three, two, one, let's go. And those of you who have sprained ankles before, you're gonna notice a big difference. You're gonna notice the ankle that you sprained before is gonna have very little stability compared to the other one. And once you sprain your ankle once, you're far more likely to do it over and over and over again. So if you haven't sprained your ankle before, these foot stabilizing exercises are great as a preventative measure. So working on balance is a good thing. Three, two, one. We're gonna do rows. So if you do the single arm row, we're gonna switch sides now. Okay, three, two, one. There's so many common mistakes with the rows, it's kind of hard to, to know where to start. But the most important thing with the row is being able to hinge and keep that back straight. Because if you're rowing with your hips and your back grounding, you're putting pressure on your back and you're not gonna work those lat muscles that you want. Second mistake people make is pulling straight up. In a straight angle or a straight line up, you want to pull diagonally, keeping the shoulder away from your ear, away from your chin. Three, two, one. Let's get into that side bridge next. Two more sets here, and then we'll take a break. Move on to that final one. Three, two, one. Let's 
two, one. Remember, if you're not comfortable enough to stack the feet, you can cross over, you can drop the knees. The most important things are that the hips are off the ground nice and high, and that you keep your back straight. And if you're not comfortable with the bridge, and if you'd just rather do a hold, that's totally fine. Remember, these workouts aren't black and white. You can modify them, you can change them up to suit your needs. Three, two, one. Last one here, body weight jump squats. Try to get some speed and some height with the jump squat. Three, two, one, let's go. And obviously if you're not comfortable with jump squat, body weight squat is fine. But we often talk about hit training, high intensity interval training. There's no such thing as a hit workout because what determines a hit workout is your intensity. So you could be doing jump squats really slow, not very explosive. The person next to you is jumping up fast, really explosive. They're doing hit, you're not. Three, two, one. Let's take 45 seconds. Move on to that final group here. So single arm, dumbbell swing, both sides. Push-ups, hovering jackknives, half burpees, two rounds, and then we're done. So 30 seconds to rest here. The single arm swing, like the dumbbell snatch, is an explosive exercise. But I want that explosive power coming just from the hips. You're not explosively swinging the arm, you're explosively swinging the hips, and the arm falls. Make sure when you lock out, you lock out by squeezing your glutes, not by pushing your knees back. Hips forward, not necessarily knees back. Okay, one arm, ready? Three, two, one, hinge, push. So doing a single arm dumbbell swing really tests to see how well your hips are working. Because it's easy to kind of mask it and hide it when you're using two weights, because the shoulders will do a lot more of the work and you can't really tell. But if you're going relatively heavy here with one dumbbell, the hips have to work. 10 seconds. The dumbbell in this traditional format should never really go above your chest. That means your arms are doing too much. Three, two, one. 10 seconds, switch arms. Okay, three, two, one. So this exercise is great for building hamstrings, glutes, and explosiveness. Common mistakes, number one is, as usual, if someone can't hip hinge, they're gonna ram it from the back and allow their back to come and do all the work. Number two is going too wide with the shoulders. And number three is not locking out from the hips. So not pushing the hips forward. Make sure you do that when you squeeze your glutes. Not necessarily going for the quads, but going hips forward. Three, two, one. All right, so next we're gonna do body weight push-ups. Okay, three, two, one. Let's go. I know so many of you want to get better with the push-ups. Make sure you get full range of motion. Don't try to get to harder uh, variations before you can get chest to ground. My general, general rule of thumb is if you can't kiss the ground, you're not low enough. So if you have to drop down to your knees, if you have to put your hands on your couch or your or a chair, that's totally fine. Get that full range of motion down and then build from there. Otherwise, you're going to build bad habits and never be able to push up properly. Three, two, one. Hovering jackknife up next. So on your back, try to keep those feet off the ground. Okay, three, two, one. Let's go. So both feet off the ground, reach up. So by having both feet off the ground, you're just putting extra tension on your core. As you can probably imagine, this exercise is an ab exercise. So we're really working the abs here, but by pressing the low back down, it incorporates more of those overall core muscles. Remember, the core muscles are any muscle that supports the spine. The abs are just these six pack muscles here. So big difference. Almost there in three, two, one. Last one here is gonna be a half burpee. So push up position, step forward, step back. Trying to get some speed here. Three, two, one, let's go. So in some ways this is gonna be a more advanced variation than the, than the burpee. Not necessarily more advanced, but in some ways more challenging because Constant tension, but you don't break. At least with that burpee, you get a break every time you stand up. Look for this one, you're trying to keep your hips low. Trying to bring your feet as close to your hands as you can. 10 seconds. 
and trying to get some momentum and build off that momentum. We're almost done here, guys. Three, two, one. Okay, so let's go back to station one, round two, then we're done everything. So single arm swing again, guys. Three, two, one. So hinge, push. Remember what I said, guys. Back straight is the most important thing. If you don't know how to hip hinge, I highly suggest go through a YouTube tutorial, really invest some time in practice, because if you can't hip hinge, you're more likely to get hurt, you're less likely to get stronger. If you can hip hinge, you're less likely to get hurt, and it's going to translate really well with a lot of exercises. Three, two, one. Okay, 10 seconds, switch sides. So think of the arm here as like a hook. Just holding on to the weight. Three, two, one. Pretend like you're not even holding anything. Pretend like you don't even have arms and it's just your hips doing all the work. Sitting back on the heels here. As you push the hips back, you should feel a stretch in your hamstrings. And then once you can't push them up back anymore, then you drive forward. As you drive forward, you're standing up and squeezing those ball muscles. Less than 10 seconds to go. Three, two, one. Let's go back to push ups. Okay, three, two, one. So, believe it or not, push ups are actually one of the more advanced exercises you can do. We all think push ups should be easy because their body weight and everyone attempts them. But there's so much going on with the push up. Not only just upper body strength, but core strength, glute strength, having the ability to keep your body straight while performing an upper body movement. It's no joke. Three, two, one. Hovering jack legs. Two more sets, guys, then we're all done. Okay, three, two, one. I remember if you can't hover your feet here, it's okay if you go feet on the ground. If you can't do a full sit up like we are, just do a leg raise and tap your shins. In some ways, that's more challenging. It requires less mobility, so it's easier to do, but it's more tension because that low back stays on the ground the whole time. 10 seconds, guys. Half burpees up next. Three, two, one. Last set of the day, half burpees. Okay, three, two, one. Nice soft knees. Find that rhythm. Once you find that rhythm, try to maintain that for the entire set. Keep pushing, guys. Halfway there, 15 more seconds. 10 seconds to go. Three, two, one, and done. That's it for today, guys. See you all tomorrow.